What's going on in the trade deadline? Anything crooked? Like what? what when do you think it's going to heat up? Monday? Because it, it depends on what happens Sunday. Oh yeah. There's think? some of that. I think that one of the interesting things we might have talked about this last week is so many teams that thought they were going to be good yeah. had bad records. Then last weekend, a lot of those teams all won. One, yes. So if you're the Patriots, you're the Giants, you're the Vikings, you're the Broncos, you all of a sudden are like, okay, wait, like what sort of spot are we in? And there's teams that are going to be both buyers and sellers at the deadline. Because one of the things you have to take into account is there's teams that don't have a lot of draft capital right now. There might be teams that are right up against the salary cap. That doesn't mean that they can't do anything. It might mean that they have to make multiple moves. You might have to, almost like NBA style, offload something to bring something in. So there's going to be a lot of things that are going on in the coming days here. I would tell you what the question you just asked me is the question a lot of GMs have been asking too, which is, is anything actually getting done? Because there's a ton of calls. There's some interesting names that are available. Are these deals actually going to get done by the start of next week? We'll find out. But I wouldn't anticipate there's something coming prior to the game. All right, give me, give, me, give me a team who um, is on that sort of um, razor's edge. They lose. They become sellers on Sunday. Well, I think, think there's still some of those teams. I think Tennessee already is in sell mode to a certain degree, obviously trading Kevin Byard. He probably wasn't in their plans beyond this season anyway. Right. So you bring in, you get a couple of picks. Again, they were another team that didn't have a lot of picks. You bring in a player who maybe can help you in Terrell Edmonds. Um, so we'll see how that ends up working out. I think that, you know, the Broncos are in a spot where they, they kind of know what they are. They obviously had a lot of picks out the door for both Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. They'd like to get draft capital back. And they're taking on the Chiefs. So let's just and say but, that that's a, that's a, a tough But if you beat the Chiefs, are you going and trading somebody? If somehow the Broncos beat the Chiefs, hmm. you would feel differently about potentially trading someone away. I would tell you this, as much as there's been a lot of speculation about the Broncos and, you know, making a lot of trades and everybody being available. I'll tell you, the prices are still high enough yeah. that nothing is imminent at this point. Doesn't mean that nothing gets done, yeah. but this is not a fire sale. And I think fire sale, I think anybody you want for a late round pick swap, this is not that. It's going to take real picks for them to trade away guys who potentially could be part of their core in the future. What about the Giants and Saquon? That, that seems to me a stretch. Right? Giants have told Saquon that they're not trading him. I don't think John Mara in any universe wants to trade Saquon Barkley. He envisions him being a core part of the future. you got to remember, they were trying to extend him back in last fall. They tried to extend him in March. They tried to extend him again at the deadline. And we really were thinking, um, you know, at the deadline, that something might get done based on where the numbers were. The, the, the deadline you're referring to, not a trade the deadline. July, but the the July. July 17th deadline that something potentially would get done right, on the contract. Right. So this is a player that they were trying to bring back. It's not as if this was just a right. nothing, one-year type of thing. Like Josh Jacobs, for instance, was in a different spot where there was really no offer until the day or two before July 17th and that deadline. So realistically, is he part of your, your future? With Saquon, they very much envision him being that. So, you know, I think Derrick Henry is an interesting one that I'm sure we'll be, you know, monitoring here. He didn't practice yesterday, which sent off a flurry of text messages Brian of what Burns exactly is, is going on. Brian Burns practicing today in Carolina. Burns, that one would surprise me if the Panthers trade him. Not impossible. They had a massive offer on the table from the Rams last year. And said no. They turned down. He also wants to get paid a lot of money. So they're going to have decisions to make, but they view him as a building block piece. And unless it is... The type of offer that they had last year from the Rams, which was right. two first-round picks, two future ones, and more, I don't envision him going anywhere. Well, I mean, Derrick Henry as well. I mean, if Kevin Byard, again, we were with the Titans in London uh, with NFL Network calling that game, and you know, you got no sense at all that this team thought they were on the brink of maybe packing it in at all. Obviously, they were two and three. They wound up being two and four with that loss. Byard was missed is Mr. Tennessee, you know, five time captain. He was talking about because we asked him about his leadership role. And he's the guy that, you know, rookies were going to for, hey, is there a good chef in town? Is there a good uh, body work person in town? Is there a good anything in town? He, he was kind of the concierge and leader of that locker room. And for them to trade him away is a significant uh, a significant sign in my mind. You Could Henry, but but you and you're like he wasn't part of their plans. Henry's going to be 30 in January, and his contract's up. Right. So, what do you think? I mean, is this finally possibly the moment where they part ways with Henry? It and is if possible, so, who who would who would be the taker? There have been a bunch of teams that have been poking around on running backs throughout the course of recent months here. I mean, I think that it's obvious you know, a team like the Ravens that's lost a bunch of backs would be a logical potential fit. 
Miami has taken some hits to that position, though I don't think Derrick Henry, his running style necessarily is right. the exact right fit. I mean, that's the thing you got to remember with a Derrick Henry who is a, he's like a ball dominant NBA player, right? Where if you were going to bring in Derrick Henry, you need to run his style of offense. You need to get him the ball a lot. You're not going to just run, you know, the Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay style of offense mm-hmm. with that player. It's got to be downhill, power running, and you better be prepared to run a certain style. That's that's a hard thing to do midstream. Having said that, he's a pretty unique player, and positionally, running back is one of the easier positions to plug and play because there's just there's only so many running plays. Wide receiver, obviously, quarterback is going to be harder than anything, but wide receiver is one of the hardest ones too because it's a million different routes. There's all kinds of different concepts. Getting the rhythm and timing and tempo with the quarterback, running back, like okay, we're going to run zone right, zone left, <laughs> inside zone. Sure, we're going to run power. We're going to run gap. Like there's not that much that you really have to do. So is it possible? Yeah, it's it's possible, and that's one of the the names certainly to monitor here. What about D Hop? That one I have not heard as much. Okay. Um, again, certainly possible. Anytime you've got players who are older players, if you're 28, 29, 30, and you're either on a one year contract or you're in a contract, you're in Bayard's case, he was essentially in a contract year because he had a big number in 2024, took a pay cut this season, probably wasn't going to be back with the team. Those are the guys who most often profile as the players who get traded this time of year because the price isn't going to be that high teams are getting like a one-year rental type situation or you know a half-year rental type situation you know you have those outliers though which are like the christian mccaffrey deal where a very unique opportunity for a guy who's still young he's had some injury issues but when he's on the field he's really really good those ones are harder because of the level of capital that's involved in the trade could something along those lines happen? It's certainly possible, but I would not say that people within the league are anticipating that level of blockbuster right now. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 